All right, here inside the Mayweather Boxing Club with our good friend Stitch Duran. Uh, Stitch, wanted to ask you, I see a lot of people talking about this Tyson Fury thing, and since you know your name is Stitch, and he got 40 stitches, 50 stitches, whatever it was, figured you'd be the right man to ask. Uh, a lot of people wondering, for, well, first of all, the healing time. Uh, when he comes back, how long do you see that, that taking for him to get back in action? Uh, it's going to take a while. You know, I think, you know, you're talking about the 40 or so, you know, 47 stitches. Uh, but, you know, I know they sewed it in and then from the outside, from the inside and then the outside. So, you know, it's going to be, you know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to take some time for sure. You know, we see a lot of guys like Badu Jack. We talked to you before about that. You know, it was not in quite the same place, obviously. Uh, different type of uh, tissue. Th where he got cut on the eyebrow like that and the eyelid, how susceptible is he going to be the rest of his career to that opening up right away? Well, you know, it all depends on the healing process, you know, and then, you know, how they, uh, how they close the cut. But I'm sure that, you know, they had a pretty good plastic surgeon to, uh, to heal it. But defense, 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 you know, uh, the probabilities of it happen again, uh, not bad, you know, not bad. You know, I think, uh, you know, what Jorge should do and Jorge Capetillo did a great job is keep ice on, on his cut every round uh, just to do any preventive maintenance. But I think it'll be okay. Yeah, let's, let's talk about, uh, I know he got some, some good credit for that. Uh, what do you think about the work that he did? Anything specific that stood out about the job that he did with Tyson? Yeah, you know, the thing I, I was telling Jorge, because we sat down and we, you know, went over the details and all that, but the thing that I liked about him is he got in there within seven seconds. And uh, that's, that's key importance is to, you know, get as much time to work on the fighter as possible. But uh, he was thrown into deep waters, man, and uh, he survived. And, you know, he not only was it important for this fight, for Tyson Fury, but also for the rematch, you know. So, uh, you know, if he got bonuses, he should have got bonuses. I think top rank guy should get him a car, you know, because <laughs> he, uh, he definitely saved the whole night and he saved the, uh, the the fight for the rematch. Were you surprised a lot of people also thought that the fight should have been stopped? Um, you said if it wasn't Fury, you know, that the fight would have been stopped. Do, do, were you wondering if they were going to do that? And, and what do you think about the decision ultimately let them continue to finish the fight? Yeah, you know what, if it's any other state, uh, they probably would have stopped it. But, you know, I was talking about it today. The doctors here in Nevada are they're the best and you know even though the cut looks bad you can't let it freak you out as long as there's no nerve damage optical nerve damage or you know the blood is getting into the eye and thank god it was kind of moving into the side more than than up, up the, but uh yeah i'm glad they let it go you know yeah of course you know you get a little extra bonus because you are tyson fury and such a big fight coming up in the horizon well, explain the rules. I know I see a lot of people debating. They're saying, well, because Tyson was dominating the fight, they let him go rather than he was getting, you know, pummeled every round. They might have stopped it. Is there a rule? Are you told, you know, if, if you're on offense, you know, we're going to let it slide? Or, or does it really matter? Is it cut to cut and it's supposed to be stopped, period? Man, that's a good question, bro. You're doing pretty good for yourself. You know, the, the, the thing whenever you stop a fight is whether a fighter is at a disadvantage. And during all these rounds, even though you can't let the blood freak you out, and that's why I love the doctors here in Las Vegas, because a lot of them, you know, work in the trauma centers, and a lot of them are surgeons, they don't freak out with blood. And even though the cut looked bad, it didn't give them a disadvantage. So uh, they made the right call. And then this last thing, you touched on a little bit, but how susceptible is that to reopening compared to other places on the body, like the forehead or, you know, the chin or whatever? Is it, is it more susceptible to opening his next fight? Yeah, well, you know, like I mentioned before, defense is going to definitely be key, you know, to keep, uh, no sense taking a shot there. Uh, but I could almost guarantee you that Deontay Waldo would be looking for that as a target. Uh, but once again, if they give him enough time to heal, uh, then he'll be fine, you know, and uh, keep your eyes on it every round and make sure that it's greased up a little bit uh, more than usual. Uh, I think he'll be fine. This last thing, so for Capitia, though, you, you thought he did a great job, huh? Yeah, he did a good job, you know, and, and being that it's, it, it happened to such a young cut man in such a big, big event, and to have a major, major cut, he, uh, he pulled through, you know, and uh, like I say, uh, got to give him props for that. Last thing, what, what would you consider your best work in a, we'll go boxing, I know you work at it, but most people watching are boxing, so what was your, you know, if you were to show, you know, some of your highlight reel, what would be the fight that you were most proud of? Uh, there's been plenty, but you know, the one that always pops up is Raul Marcus when he fought Keith Moore. He did it for everybody, doesn't he? He was always bleeding. Yeah, yeah he, was a, he was a cut man's dream, you know. Uh, but he fought Keith Mullins and ended up with two gashes, big gashes like that, you know, two here, one in the nose. I think it was something like 70 stitches throughout the whole thing, and I kept him in the game. He defended his world title, and that was actually my coming out fight. Uh, here in Las Vegas and uh, you know Chuck Bodak my, my mentor at that time was the first one to come and tell me I did a great job and he's the one that welcomed me into being a cut man uh, here in Las Vegas. All right buddy appreciate your thoughts. Of course anytime you know that.